It's another early one today. We're rolling into Fullerton, California to uh, go to a thread grinding shop. They also grind worm, the worm form that we're looking for, very specific uh, pitches, etc. And we have a very good machinist today that's going to show us the ropes. Here's his hands uh, that make this machine dance we're going to work with today. Welcome, Luke. Hey everybody, I'm here with Luke today on this 1942 Jones and Lamson. We're gonna grind some worms today. This is a manual machine and it's controlled by change gears. And this is a special story. This, uh, that handwriting on this gear we're looking at, one of the change gears is the original one for the machine and it was uh that handwriting is from luke's great uncle so this this uh business and machine have been in the family for a very long time when you walk into shops like this and you're going to work with people you can always tell you're in a quality shop just by the workmanlike manner they keep their workstations and their tools and their parts and this is one of them this is definitely one of them check it out so the first thing we're gonna do is come in here and change the change gears. Now the design of this uh, worm gear set is such that you you set these change gears to give you the right uh, helix angle and right lead, etc. So this is uh, the method and the, the four gear method. We've covered a lot on the channel in terms of gear machines. They have the four, you know, kind of a universal transmission like this gears A, B, C, and D, and it's a very, you can get some very specific ratios out of it, and that's why they're used. So that's it for the change gears. We've got the machine set up from that angle. Now we've got to put the uh, helix angle into it, which for our design is uh, a little over three degrees. Now these, uh, these bolts that Luke is loosening adjust three diamonds, and there's a concentric motor head device you'll see it turn here in a minute it's got some really neat movement and the three diamonds each one does the sides for our 20 degree pressure angle and then the one in the back sets the uh the flat on the tip the tip flat and it makes a, a very very small tip radius on it you'll see here in a little bit now here's a vernier scale there's degrees on and minutes on it there's one on the back as well it's it's a little more coarse it chases the one from the front, so really the one, the fine adjust is on the front, and uh, it's a check on the back. So we're just going through the motions of setting the whole machine up. Yep, there it is. So it's uh, degrees on the left and minutes on the right, and it's a vernier scale, so where they're parallel, you can get in there and grab a few extra minutes of uh, precision. Very similar to our uh, fatter gear machines. Now, this machine certainly doesn't disappoint in its complexity and also the quality of its build. Luke's pointing out the two guide plates on the back that you set for the 20 degree pressure angle. It's also how the diamonds run on the blade, as you'll see here in a little, little bit, to uh, set the uh, pressure angle on the side of the blade. It's gonna make that same shape into your part. of areas you probably wouldn't want to stick your finger in there now that doesn't look pr super pretty because there's uh, some grinding gunk in there but basically that's where the the diamonds are and uh, these these little diamond nibs are placed in the back on that uh, jig that's adjusted from the back Luke Luke is uh, adjusting that very back one now Obviously, we don't do this with the wheel on, but uh, this allows, the machine has an automatic cycle that runs this uh, large vitronite wheel in and out and uh, dresses that tip edge. So there's their inventory of all the different wheels they have. Most of them are already set at, you know, 30 degree for 60 degree threads, uh, 14 and a half, and, you know, more of the common ones. And they keep these wheels probably for jobs, etc. But they've got a lot of them. They're everywhere. 
And you know, when they're cutting threads, here's all the thread checkers. So we're over there in their kind of metrology department. And so what we're after here is some pins. So these, uh, the thread we're going to grind or worm form actually with our, our diametral pitch in it is uh, something that you need to measure that over wires with, measurement over wires. So the whole design and part drawing is, is delivered in advance so that these things can be calculated out. They were nice enough to run through the paces with me. And after you get the pens, you need to get a dog that fits your part. So we've got, uh, again, Luke's workstation is just wonderful. They've got a dog for everything and everything's in its place as it should be. All right, here we are getting down to business. Here's our four inch long part. It's got the, that, uh, area in between the two grooves is where we're going to cut the thread form and here's the wheel getting dressed you'll uh, you'll see a little uh, line coming along the side the diamonds are in the back but if you look carefully here in just a second I think we'll see it in one of these sequences there it is you can see the diamonds dressing that wheel back from the from the front edge now that's really important so they've got a, a neat trick here they, they cut that uh, thread form on a razor blade, take it back over to the optical comparator. This one's also made by Jones and Lambs. It's a neat set of equipment they have here. And Luke is just lining up the razor blade and the light source, and it reflects off of a mirror and comes onto a large scale. So there's our design tip. I mean, on the money, it's got a little bow in it, so there's some more redressing to do. Luke's just showing me some other uh, parts of the internal piece of the machine they have spares for. When you own these old pieces of equipment, you end up kind of in your own parts house. All right, now we're bringing the uh, chuck in. Oh, that's where all the change gears come into play. As the wheel traverses the part, it needs to turn that tailstock just the right rotational speed. So that's where the helix angle and all that comes into play. You can see it doing its thing right there. That big case on the left is the one where we changed the change gears and put in our design. There's a uh, feeds and speeds for everything. This uh, pretty much everything you could think of is adjustable on this machine. It's pretty amazing design. Uh, you know, just working on it for a day. Not uh, not not a machine you'd want to run just on your first day of work if you didn't know about it. But uh, you can see Luke's stretched out making this thing uh, do its do its paces just like it's no big deal. <laughs> Little uh, clutch on the left and uh, advance on the right. So there's our part. We're finally in between centers and our wheels running there. So we're gonna take a skim cut and just check the pitch. And that's what he's up to right here. So we're chucked up, we have our part in the machine now, and Luke's going pretty fast, he's making this look easy, but these are pretty standard little stops you see here he's setting, and those uh, those wheels will make it stop on the beginning of the end of the trough on either side of the uh, warm thread form. So he's setting those, he's moving it, traversing his machine back and forth to check those without the blade touching the part to start with. And then he comes in here and just takes a really light grace here in just a sec. And there it is. So we're going to, we've skinned it. We did a little pitch check. We missed that on camera, but uh, the oil needs to flow upward as he was indicating right there. And he's getting everything all set so we can uh, make some cuts. Oh, we're all set up and we're coming right in for the cut. This is the first uh, substantial cut here. We're, we'll end up making full depth of cut runs for all the final pieces, but we're checking these over pins from time to time. And uh, so he's coming in slowly. We're going to do some checks, some more checks on the comparator. 
So Luke is pretty astute with this machine. He's checking the sound on either side. Uh, we, we disengaged the worm there for a second, so he's checking to make sure he was running true in the middle. Now, that's not what we're looking for, but I uh, want to show everything because this is what, it, what it's about. So there's a little bit more dressing on the wheel to do and a little more adjusting of getting that fluid running just at the right angle. It needs to be pointed up just a little bit, I guess, is the technique. And uh, he's just checking this all out. I think we're even, uh, we even dressed it one more time. Yeah, you can see the smoke. It's uh, the diamonds are doing their thing in the back, doing another dressing. So that first shape, there must've been a nick in the wheel or it just wasn't uh, properly formed. Yeah, so let's get in here close. There we go. We can see that uh, the diamonds doing their work and dressing that wheel back. A little hard to get in there and keep oil on it. You want oil on it so it doesn't burn up the diamond. But for filming, we were trying to find a happy medium in there. So we're back to the comparator and we've got our flanks just fine. And we needed a 36 and a half thousandths uh, flat tip relief. So we're starting to look pretty good here. There are angles on this chart for comparison also, and he can uh, rotate that out of ring on these charts to uh, get us where we need to go. So here we are with the pins, starting to check these uh, depths. We have a target we're trying to hit, and uh, check this out, man. Luke's done this a lot. Uh, one. Checking it to the tenth on the gauge pin. Yep. Boom, number two, that wire is perfect three so uh this guy's done this a lot pretty skilled guy and here we are back at it grinding some more he's just showing the uh depth of cut indicator here the small indications are two tenths so a thousandths is like an eighth of a turn on this dial okay, where are we at, Luke? and again back to the pins a little iterative here to get the first one dialed in now those are uh flange micrometers because there's two pins on one side and one on the other, and it can encompass those and give you a really good measurement. So he's checking these, we're comparing against our notes, and bang, there it is. There's the full depth on their uh, Jones and Lampson comparator. And there's the boss showing us how it's done. Now we've done one, and it may have taken a little while to set the machine up, maybe, maybe an hour and a half or two. But uh, this old machine from 1942, man, it can just do it. So here's the first one. It's, uh, the form's not cleaned up. We're running our worm wheel on it. If you've followed along in this series, you've seen us making the worm wheel, doing a lot of design work, etc. cetera. So that's, uh, that's one for the books right there. Let's get it all cleaned up and we'll do some more checks and cut the next one and uh, you know, obviously keep checking them as we go. Here's another shot uh, showing how we can uh, check the lead on it, which checked out. Sorry, I'm a little out of frame here. Luke's showing us that. So there's a micrometer to check everything. People that are familiar with these comparators will know what we're, what we're up to, but that's a very good form. And the tip radius on that is like a thousandths. It's really sharp. So the teeth on the ends of these can get right in the root of that uh, worm gear. It's a very nice mesh. The feel of it is really good uh, once we got the, those first ones off and cleaned them up. There we are, in early, out by noon. There's 20. Thanks, thanks Luke. It was a fun day.